is that, that we then turn green with water that we've produced from desalination plants. So I was very relieved when I heard that these were becoming less energy intensive and therefore more sort of carbon neutral. Perhaps you could explain a bit about how that, what that new innovation has been and, and why it is so effective. Uh, thank you, Georgia. I think uh, the points you make are very valid. Firstly, uh, you know, we do live in a desert uh, and this uh, part of the world is not designed to sustain the level of population uh, that is currently inhabiting here. So the only reason we are able to live here and able to live here so comfortably is because of desalination. Um, historic desalination plants um, in the region were predominantly distillation processes, uh, which were very energy intensive. Uh, pretty much all of the new large scale desal plants that are coming up are membrane processes, which do use a lot less energy. And I'm very glad uh, that the utilities in the region have all uh, accepted the shift to, to membrane processes. Um, they are slightly more complicated to operate, uh, but uh, they do definitely have a better impact on the environment and they're less costly. Uh, the, so I think that's the number one change in as a trend. Uh, there's a lot of development in terms of energy recovery processes, so uh, uh, one can optimize the amount of energy utilized. Uh, then comes, most importantly, your source of energy. Uh, and what we've seen in the region, and you've referred to uh, earlier in the introduction to uh, uh, solar being key, what we've seen is the economics of, uh, of renewable energy and solar in particular coming down such that they are uh, more attractive than fossil fuel energy. And I think that's the main driver that's making uh, desalination powered by solar energy or powered by other renewable sources uh, to be economic and therefore something uh, that we're seeing more and more of. Do you think that it therefore makes desalination sustainable? Now, that, I mean, that's such a, a, that's such a, that's a word that's bandied around quite a bit at the moment. Uh, but has it got to that stage where the technology is so good and the fact that we've got renewable energy that it's no longer something that I need to feel guilty about? Absolutely, Georgia. You do not need to feel guilty about it. Uh, desalination is sustainable uh, when done properly. Uh, we've now implemented so far two uh, commercial scale solar desalination plants. They happen to be in, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, one for the city of Neom and one for King Abdullah Economic City. Uh, both are operating uh, very smoothly. Um, and we see that to be a sign of where things are going in the future. Uh, so that the, the power consumption and the impact on the environment is absolutely minimised. I mean, you guys have got plants all over the world. How many have you got here in the UAE? Uh, we have uh, built, I would say, over a dozen in the UAE. Uh, globally, we would have built, um, I believe, over a thousand. Oh, wow. A thousand. Wow. That really is a lot. I, I mean, are you the biggest players in the industry, effectively? Uh, we, it depends what metric you use, and it does vary sort of from year to year, um, but we're definitely in the top three globally. Um, we're currently constructing the world's largest plant, which is a million cubic meters a day. That's also in Saudi and uh, serving Jebel. Um So that's one that uh, is quite a significant scale uh, in terms of where uh, desalination is going. I mean... With water, one of our most valuable commodities already, and I mean, you can see that, that, that sort of the effects of climate change already causing a massive drought in uh, the, the Horn of Africa with 20 million people threatened in that situation. And, and with all the meteorologists suggesting that this is only going to get worse, you guys must find yourself in a very strong position in that there's no shortage of seawater. And so if you can therefore turn it into fresh water, then you know, your business must be set, must be forecast to grow and grow. Thank you, George. You know, you're absolutely right. It is, it is an exciting time for our industry. And I think what's happened also is there's been a focus on infrastructure um, and the need to, to prioritise that for, for people's quality of life. Um, however, I would also point out that it's not only desalination that's, uh, that's a solution for water shortages. Um, so desalination is one, and in countries that, that are water stressed um, and have uh, also economic concerns, take for example in Egypt right now, we're looking at a very large scale program of solar powered desalination plants. 
Um, and that's uh, that's as a result of the pressure that they're having in terms of the concerns of the security of supply on the Nile. Um, we've we've implemented a series of uh, of projects there so far, but uh, the larger ones are now uh, are coming in. Having said all of that, uh, wh where I see the the solution is one to have a, a balanced approach in terms of one's sources of water, uh, and in particular, I'm a very large proponent of water reuse. So much less energy intensive and much less costly than desalinating water is reusing wastewater. And we have a series of uh, reuse plants um, here in Dubai, for example. Uh, we have um, the wastewater facility in uh, Dubai Investments Park that's uh, providing all the water, for example, to the green community. Uh, we have the uh, waste, we've constructed the wastewater facility underground in Palm Jumeirah, and that's being reused for district cooling. So uh, reuse of wastewater, I think is key. Um, we have uh, uh, built and are currently operating the world's largest reuse facility, which is a million cubic meters a day in Egypt. Um, that's uh, using agricultural runoff water, and that's irrigating Western Sinai. Um, so it's a very strategic for them. Um, that I said is a million cubic meters a day, but we're now constructing one that is seven and a half million cubic meters a day. Um, so that's uh, able to serve a population equivalent of something like 30, 40 million people out of one plant. Um, and I think that's an important part of, uh, of one's water strategy is to, uh, yes, you do need to desalinate, but if you can reuse the more you reuse, the better it is. Reusing wastewater is something that people get quite squeamish about in this country, which I've always found intriguing because I lived in London for a decade. And the sort of standard folklore there was that uh, that the London tap water had already passed through seven sets of kidneys uh, before it came into your glass. So I was already quite relaxed about the idea of uh, wastewater being turned into fresh water. Is, is that effectively what is being done in your plants? Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what, you've, what you've mentioned is absolutely correct. And the water is, um, by, by definition, it's something that is always reused. Um, so all the water in the world is being reused. The question is um, the length of the process in which you reuse it. And you gave the example that when you when water reaches London, it's, it's gone down the Thames, um, upstream from London, it's been extracted, it's been utilized, and then it's gone through wastewater facilities, and then it's gone back into the Thames. That's what we would call indirect reuse. Um, uh, and uh, we're seeing uh, the level of reuse improve. Um, there are plants right now where you go straight into drinking water uh, uh, facilities. Um, so originally the concept uh, uh, at scale took place in Singapore with something which they marketed as new water, where they've got a very secure uh, system where the water is, the wastewater is goes through multiple processes, but there it still then goes into the reservoir and I believe it supplies something like 13% of their supply, it mixes in with the other waters. Um, but we are now looking at what we call a direct water reuse and we're currently uh, bidding on a project in Botswana where we would take the um, wastewater and within the same facility go through all the treatment processes to put it, be able to put it back into the drinking water system. Um, again, though, I would say that that's not drinking uh, reused water is not the priority. The vast majority of water is used for uh, agriculture and then for industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so even here in the UAE, um, you'd be surprised to know maybe that 80% of the water consumption is for agriculture. Wow. Uh, so uh, if we can reduce the demand and uh, uh, on of drinking water by supplying agriculture, by supplying industry, by supplying district cooling, um, by supplying the power plants in, the, in terms of their water requirements, um, then that is uh, the vast majority of what we need to do. So consumption also needs to come down. That would be another way to save water. I know that, uh, for example, I bring it back to London again, one of the big problems with water, water waste in the UK is with bursting pipes because they're all so old. I don't imagine that's necessarily a problem here in the UAE. Is, is that something Matito is concerned about, encouraging people to con conserve water and reduce their consumption? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely, we do need to. We, we live in a part of the world that has the highest level of water scarcity, yet at the same time, we have the highest per capita consumption 
of fresh water in the world. Wow. We consume more water per person in the GCC than is consumed in the US. That's a staggering number. Is that because of air conditioning? Um, uh, cooling is, is a big user of water, but I think there's also um, a need to uh, educate people to, to be more conservative uh, in terms of the use of water. Um, and so uh, people just being aware, you know, the very simple act, for example, of when you brush your teeth to uh, close the tap and then reopen it when you uh, need the water versus keeping it running. Yeah. Something very small and minor like that is sort of basic education that I think needs to uh, proliferate much more widely within the societies that we're in. Rami, it's been an absolutely fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for, for answering all my, my slightly random questions about tap water in London and burst pipes. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for your time. George, the pleasure is mine. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Rami Kandor, who is Managing Director of Matito, which is one of the biggest water treatments in the world. Absolutely extraordinary to discover uh, that here in the UAE, we actually use more fresh water than people do in the United States. And that is despite, of course, the fact that nearly all of our water has to be produced in desalination. 